My name is David Chen. I'm joined by my regular co-hosts, Devendra Hardwar and Adam Quigley. Joining us also is a film critic for New York Press, Armand White. Armand, thanks for sticking around with us for the After Dark segment. Sure. Armand, I wanted to just talk briefly. I know you don't have that much time, but um, I wanted to just talk briefly with you about um, your, your notion that uh, the current state of film criticism in America, uh, I, I believe you describe it as intellectual anarchy. And I was just wondering if you could just talk a little bit about what you meant by that, you know, and uh, what you see as the current state of film criticism. Well, I can't exactly remember when I said that or then or the context in which I said it. Sure. But I think it still applies. Uh, you know, we've got we've got film critics who are employed professionally by uh, some legitimate publications. And uh and, and we have the world of the internet film writers. And uh the internet has become so pervasive and overwhelming that that they've stolen the internet has stolen the kind of uh, impact and uh, prestige and, and effect that traditional professional film criticism used to have. As a result of that, I think that people who are now employed by by uh, the mainstream media uh, are so intimidated by the internet. That it seems when you when you read mainstream published film critics that they've simply given given up being film critics because they're afraid of losing readership because they're afraid of losing their jobs probably because publishers and editors simply want to get readers and appease readers rather than inform and instruct readers and I think that leads to a kind of anarchy where there are very few people writing about film who who know what they're talking about. And and who are rigorous about uh, having standards in film. Uh, the anarchy, I think, comes from the fact that most that in in mainstream media and in the internet, that most people who write about films are simply writing from a from a fan's perspective rather than a crit- a truly critical perspective. And so so that so the term that what, what used to be termed film critics now is almost meaningless because you just got a free for all of, of, of enthusiasms rather than criticism. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it seems almost as if the critics did that to themselves, though. I mean, even before the Internet sort of became a huge thing, you know, film criticism was not... uh, It wasn't a golden age for film criticism in the 90s before, uh, you know, before the Internet really took off. And then when Roger Ebert uh, went to TV with film criticism, there was a whole hubbub there about that killing... You know, that wasn't actually film criticism. That was something else entirely. He's just being a TV star. It seems like with every you know shift in media, um, the 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 uh, the class it's being uh, progressed from see, uh, seems to claim it's dying. Well, you know, I, I do think it is fair to say that Roger Ebert destroyed film criticism because he be because of the the far reach, the wide and far reach of television. Uh, he became an example of what a film critic does for too many people and uh-huh. and what he did simply was not criticism it was simply blather and uh, it was a kind of purposely dishonest enthusiasm for product for famous product not real criticism at all but but i mean he has he has the training that you were talking about he is well versed in you know cinema the history of cinema the language of cinema he just brought it to a wider audience is that inherently wrong it seems like is that does that does that depreciate the art of film criticism i think he does not have the training i think i think he simply had the position i i think he does not have the training i've got the training <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. and and frankly i don't care how that sounds but the fact is i've got the training i've got i'm a pedigreed film critic i've studied uh-huh. it i know it and i and i know many other people who've studied it as well studied it seriously Ebert just simply happened to have the job, and he's had the job for a long time. He he does not have the foundation. He simply got the job. And if you've ever seen any of his shows, and and ever watched his shows on on at least a two-week basis, then you surely saw how he would review, let's say, eight movies a week, and every week liked probably six of them. And that is just simply inherently dishonest. 
that's what's called being a shill. And, and it's a tragic thing that that became the example of what a sim critic does for too many people. And often, often he wasn't practicing criticism at all. He, he often would simply point out gaffes or mistakes in continuity. That's not criticism. That's, that's really a, a very pea-brained kind of fan gibberish. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's worth getting to the name calling there. I mean, that's not fair. Okay, no, I, I, haven't, I haven't called him a name. I haven't called well, him a name. You called I, him I, 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 I have not called P Brain is not a name. Okay. Well, you should also be aware. It's, 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 it's not a name. It's, it's not a yeah. name. It's a description of an insufficient kind of expression. I've not called him a name. All right. Yes. But I, th- I, I but I, I listen. You guys asked me, and I think it's important yeah, yeah. to make it's important to make this point because, especially on the internet, this point is not clear, is is unclear to most people, that he that Ebert has become the example of what a film critic is, and and I will I, people need to realize quite clearly and plainly that he's not, and that he's been a bad example, and people who follow his example are just are going to wind up making making the whole profession. Turning the whole profession into a kind of. But you realize that's us you're talking about, right? <laughs> no, I don't realize. I don't realize that. But if the shoe fits, wear it. I'm not. Be- I'm not <laughs> making a personal attack on you guys. Right, right, sure. But, it, well, but, it, but it, it, it simply, it simply is what I have, what I have observed on the internet, and what I have observed in the mainstream media as well. Um, right, it's not it. But Ar- Armand, I mean, again, as Devinder pointed out, uh, I mean, at every phase of history, whenever the proliferation of. Uh, sort of media creation tools has occurred, uh, there has always been the argument that uh, this is bad for society. For example, in 1685, historian Adrian Baillet wrote, we have reason to fear that the multitude of books which grows every day in a prodigious fashion will make the following centuries fall into a state as barbarous as that of the centuries that followed the fall of the Roman Empire. And that's how he's talking about the proliferation of books. You know, and in the same way, it sounds similar to what you're saying about the proliferation of uh, internet film criticism. I mean, would mm-hmm. you say that there is some parallel there potentially? That that yes, yeah, sure, there is a lot of noise on the internet, but there also uh, a lot of good can arise out of uh, the democratization of uh, this type of uh, film discussion. Well, first of all, I don't know who that is you quoted. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that's a new name to me. I don't know, and so I don't. I don't know that I that I put any credence behind what that person said. Well, I'm, say, I'm saying you shouldn't put any credence behind it because he, I mean, I don't think that we've descended into a barbarous nature because of books, but that's me. No, I, well, you know, that, <laughs> frankly, I mean, I, I don't know who that is. You quoted to me, but it, 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 it's, a, it's, not, it's not, I'm not asking you to tell me either. It just sounded ridiculous, <laughs> frankly. Okay. And, yeah, and, right, I, and, time, I, and I hope, I hope, I hope not to sound ridiculous when I, when I say that, uh, you know, we got you know, we've got hundreds, if not thousands, of people writing about movies. Just because people have a blog doesn't make them a film critic. You know, what 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 is what is a film critic? A film critic is someone, or ought to be, someone who has an informed opinion, and someone who is able to. Is this and this is also crucial. Someone who is able to practice interpretation uh, and comparison and analysis and not simply write their enthusiasms. I'm not saying that people don't have the right to do that. They have the right to do that, but that's not what criticism is. Criticism, by the way, I mean, it, it, it's my profession, and it's, it's what I take seriously. And, and, and so I, for me, I insist that, that the word criti- critic is almost an honorific, and that if you're going to be a critic or going to be called a critic, then you've got to prove worthy of that. You, you've got to know your stuff and not just simply like it. People like to say, but I love movies. Well, good for you, but that's, that's not what makes a critic, loving movies. You have to be able to analyze, and you have to know the history of the form, and you, ha- and you have to be willing to make those comparisons, because it's, it's a way of being rigorous with yourself and not simply giving in to your enthusiasms. I, I think I, everyone... I, I, actually, sorry, I, I really want to pose a question here. Um, during the Inception review, you mentioned that it's also important to be like free of the outside context of, for example, when it comes to filmmaking, um, whether like what filmmaker was involved in what aspect of the, the film, would you not also say that there's probably some value in someone coming, for example, someone writing a, a review on the internet, maybe they haven't seen these classic films that you believe they should, but isn't there also some value in maybe having the perspective of someone that's coming at it just from a completely 
fresh angle. You haven't, you don't have the context. You're just experiencing it for the completely the first time, and you can analyze it from that perspective. Is that not an interesting side to film film criticism? And, and you also did argue uh, that you are more primarily concerned with what's in front of you. That's what you said, I believe, mm-hmm. um, during our review. Well, it's only worthwhile if you can come up a so-called fresh perspective. It's only worthwhile if you can come up with a fresh idea. But simply having a fresh perspective isn't necess- it certainly isn't a guarantee of anything. Uh, you, you know, you, know you, could, you could show a four-year-old the seventh seal, and I don't know that the four-year-old's response to it would, would be as meaningful to anyone but the four-year-old or its parents. Um, well, also, a four-year-old, four-year-old would not be able to articulate what they were feeling in that. But so that's, I think, sort of diminishing well, what the, the point I'm trying to make. I think there's, there's, mm-hmm. there are teenagers that are just being exposed to films, and then maybe they're they're just becoming young adults, and they're learning about movies for the first time. Um, that are probably they're, they're smarter than a four-year-old, and they can actually articulate what they're feeling for the first time or, or what they're getting out of it for the first time. Um, because also, I imagine that when you started getting into film, you were experiencing films for the first time. There's probably a relationship you have with these much older movies that you can never have again with these newer films. But now there's new generations experiencing these films probably the same way that you were experiencing those classics. Sure. Okay, guys, I'm going to say something that you're probably not going to like. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm prepared. Well then, well, then why are you talking to me? No, 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 no. I hope you don't feel that you've been disrespected. We're very interested in kind of what your, uh, your reasoning is and, and the positions that you hold. So please share. Okay. As, 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 as Bill Cosby said... This this isn't going to mean anything to you because it happened a long time ago. But Bill Cosby, you know, he's a comedian. Started out as a comedian, and I, I believe that his very first comedy album had this title: "I Started Out as a Child." So I want to say to you guys, I started out as a child also. I started out as a young person interested in movies. What I felt about movies at age 15, even at age 20, was, was very interesting and fascinating to me. But from my perspective, and I am no longer 15 or 20, I didn't know much at that age. And, I, and, I, and probably what I suspect that you won't like is when I say that I think of when, when people, when, when anyone puts their ideas out before the public, um, there ought to be some justification for it. And the justification isn't simply that you are an American living in a democracy. The justification for, for intruding on people's time and thoughts should be that you've got some experience and that you know what you're talking about, that you are learned and professional. And if you don't have that, then then really, you know, that's, that's what clubs are for. That's what pen pals are for. That's what friendships are for. I think the, I do believe that the Internet has distorted that. And so people who enjoy movies like to write about them, and that's good. That's good. But it's, it's become confused with what criticism is. Often, forgive me for saying, because it follows the Roger Ebert model. But that's not what criticism is for me. I seriously don't think that's what it is. And and I and I and you know I, I don't say that to be insulting to anyone. I, I I and I don't ever mean to be encouraging, discouraging, discouraging to people. But really, that you know I'm I'm a professional film critic, and and I and I and so I I don't have much respect for people who are not, and or, and, or even for professionals who don't follow the profession in a serious and dignified manner. I I, I have no respect for that. I mean, I actually agree with you a got, lot of. You, yep, go ahead. I was going to say, you guys might have perhaps come, come across something I wrote or said somewhere where I said that I think no one should be allowed to make a movie before they're 40. And I kind of feel that way, really. Although, although there's a whole lot of, there, obviously there are a whole lot of exceptions to that. We'd have no Citizen Kane if that were true, if mm-hmm. that were so. But I kind of, but I... I kind of feel that way, and I, and I certainly feel that way about criticism. I, I think really there should be no film critics 
okay, let's change the age. There should be no film critic younger than 30 because you, you don't know, before, because before that you don't know much, you don't know enough about art, you don't know enough about life. And, and, and I repeat to you, I started out as a, as a young person interested in writing about film, but really, 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 I know more now than I knew then. Well, for, and, for sure. But yeah. if you were a teenager now, I feel like uh, given your love of film, you would want to be contributing to everything that's happening online. You just didn't have this opportunity available to you at that time. It's, it's sure. just you know, a matter of uh, you know, when you sort of just get into these things. You couldn't have really controlled but that. I actually, I actually yeah. agree largely with what you're saying, Mr. Way. And I mean, it's a thing where you can call it film criticism. You can, like you said, you can call it a discussion club. I, I would have no problem um, calling what we do discussing a film as opposed to being film critics. But I mean, I, I know it's a big deal for a lot of people what the moniker is. I mean, it's not that important to me. Uh, and so, so to a large extent, I actually agree with what with what you're saying. Um, but I'm wondering if you can kind of tell us about uh, before you go, if you can tell us about critics that that you particularly admire and that you think our listeners should watch out for. Oh, oh, well, <laughs> I'll answer you this way. <laughs> Uh, if there are a whole bunch of crit- if there are a whole bunch of critics who I thought were were doing a good job, then I would stop. <laughs> because really, you know, the reason I do what I do is because I think there there are things that need to be said about movies, about culture, about the world that nobody's saying, and that's why I do what I do. I you know I I, I can only ask you to to read to read around, read as widely as you can, and whoever you read, hold, hold them to a standard. And, and, and don't simply, you know, enjoy a critic because they, they say what you want to hear. But, but read, read, read as many people as you care to, but, but ask yourself, are they really talking about what's on the screen? Do they know the history of, of this form? Uh, do they have any political awareness? Do they have, do they have any spiritual or moral or religious awareness even and even that's even if you're not a religious person because frankly you know we're living in a western judeo-christian culture and that stuff is part of our culture I mean, it's culture and it's part of the art that we've experienced and been and grown up with and it's part of the way it's part of it's part of our constitution it's part of the way we in the west think about things so it, it's fair to require that of critics as it is the filmmakers, just you know, read it. Read anybody as skeptically as you read me. Don't don't just don't just read to read to to hear what you like to hear. Um, All right. Uh, well, I, I think that's a good uh, place to end it. Uh, but we'll we'll continue this episode. But first, let me ask you, Armand, if you can just tell people where they can find more of your work uh, on the internet or elsewhere. Well, uh, I got those books out there. The Resistance. Ten Years of Pop Culture That Shook the World. There was the Tupac book, which is Rebel for the Hell of It, uh, The Art Life of Tupac Shakur. There's my uh, Michael Jackson book, Keep Moving, The Michael Jackson Chronicles. Uh, I write for New York Press. I write for a publication that's called First of the Month, and I do as much freelancing as I can. So, I, you know, I, that's that's about the extent of it. All right, Armin. And, I'm and sorry. There, should be some, there should be a new book coming out this year. Stay tuned. All right, very cool. Uh, well, Armand, we really appreciate uh, your time and uh, uh, just you know sharing your opinions with us. And um, hopefully, you didn't. Uh, hopefully, if you ha- somewhat enjoyed yourself, you'll consider returning again. Well, I, I thank you for for listening and for asking me and, and and giving me the opportunity to to sort out some thoughts. Def- definitely, sir. Well, I've, thank you I've very much, it. and uh, have a good night, sir. We'll hope I'll we'll be reading you soon again, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you.